Okay, I think uh, that it's, uh, it's, it's time we get started. Um, uh, probably some people will join, but uh, I'll, I'll start with, uh, with introducing. So uh, again, welcome to everybody. It's great to have you all uh, here in this, uh, in this webinar. It's been a while since we've been doing webinars two years ago when uh, COVID started and everybody was in a lockdown working from home, all kinds of cancel meetings canceled. We said, hey, let's, let's organize uh, a series of webinars. And that's what we did. By the way, you can still find them on our website on ccmap.com. Uh, um, one of them was also on Air, Air, Erlang. Uh, and then recently, um, through several means. One was also a discussion on a Telegram uh, uh, forum. Um, I realized that uh, people had questions about how to use Erlang, especially for ca capacity calculations. And uh, also in, in some of the encounters we have, we, uh, uh, I realized that, that er the Erlang formulas are not always used in the right way. So what I would like to do today, so I proposed here, to, to organize this webinar. And it's more about how to use a, a little bit of background, not very technical, but more hands-on how to use Erlang in a, um, in a practical uh, setting. So that's what I'm going to show. And what I'm going to do, I'm also, um, uh, I'm going to, uh, to do it uh, live. That's a bit risky, of course, when you're entering things in Excel and uh, if you make, uh, it's easy to make errors in Excel and then uh, with a large audience, it's always, uh, well, uh, yeah, it's always a bit uh, exciting to do that, but I have a backup, so don't worry. So uh, yeah, so I do part in uh, live and part uh, using uh, where everything is already filtered. Okay, so what is the, uh, by the way, if you have any questions, um, and the best thing, I guess, is to put them in the chat. And I have here two colleagues, uh, Wout and Si Chao, uh, in the room, uh, you can't see them, but they're just outside of uh, uh, your view, and uh, they will. Uh, uh, yeah, Wout is is also in the screen. They will. Um, uh, they will communicate if there are any uh, uh, messages, and I have also my the window open here. Okay, so what is the, uh, the what am I going to discuss today? Um, well, the very start of it. Why do we need Erlang? Um, uh, uh, what, what, what does Erlang do? Why is it there? So shortly, um, then I'll do some calculations uh, in Excel to show you uh, how it works. Then we'll go back um, and then we'll talk about economies of scale. And that is, I think, one of the central concepts uh, of Erlang, properties of the Erlang formula. So uh, important to, to talk about that. Um, then I'll dive into two more advanced topics, one which we call Erlang X. This is an extension of the familiar Erlang C that most people use. Uh, I'll say a bit about rounding. Well, when we get there, you see uh, what, that is, what that is about. And then um, two uses. On the one hand, eh, for day-to-day -day scheduling, I want to show you how to use Erlang, and I want to, after that, and that is, it was also in the title, so that is the, probably the main goal of today, is to dive into uh, capacity calculations and how to do that uh, in the right way. And that also relates, as I said, to some questions I had recently and uh, some, a discussion on the Telegram uh, group, um, well, where, uh, and of which it became clear to me that uh, that some that uh, well there is some misunderstanding on how to use it uh, in the right way. Okay, this is a full sheet. Not all my sheets are as full as this one, so this is a bit of technical background. But uh, I think it's important uh, if you're using er er uh, Erlang. And I'm not saying eh, Erlang. So the most common one is Erlang C, of course, but but this holds uh, for also for Erlang X. Um, um, it's, it, I think it's important to to have an understanding uh, of this. So uh, why do we use uh, Erlang? Well, Erlang answers the question: How many agents we need to schedule? 
Yes. And um, why isn't it, why do you need some complicated formula? I'm not going to show you the formula, um, eh, but that is indeed what Erlang himself uh, derived uh, a little over a century ago. He was a, a Danish mathematician. Um, and he derived this, this Erlang formula. And at that time, of course, there were no computers. So you had to write it down and uh, had to do the formula on paper and really compute it. Nowadays, we have computers in which it's implemented. So no need to, for you to know the formula. Um, it, 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 uh, and it's not something super simple. It really, uh, you really need, a, well, either a lengthy uh, calculation or uh, a good programmer to implement it, to, uh, to have it uh, at, available, for example, in Excel. But why do we need it? That, that's the question. It's not so much about how does the formula look like, but it's more, what does it do? Uh, why do we need it? Well, and then we, go, if we go and look at this first uh, figure here on the top right, suppose you have a forecast, and the forecast is, say, 60 calls during a quarter. Um, that means, on average, four calls per minute. Yes, but so that is the red line here. But as you can see, in reality, um, you every minute exactly four calls. These these arrivals they fluctuate. They can go as high as eight. They can go as low as, as one or perhaps even zero, but they fluctuate. Yes. So even though you forecast four calls per minute, and even if your forecast is right in the sense that on average you have four calls per minute, um, uh, reality shows fluctuations and there is noise. Um, and this noise translates itself also in the load. Yeah, so what I did here, I'm assuming, for example, an average handling time of three minutes. So this load of four calls per minute then translate itself to uh, an average load of 12 work for 12 agents per minute. And exactly because here there are in this first call, in this first minute, there are more calls than four coming in. Yes, the number of agents that you would need at that time to directly work on this call calls increases. Yes, and here, the uh, three minutes around three minutes later, but some calls take longer, some calls take shorter. This number goes down again, and then it might go up again. Yeah. So um, as the volume fluctuates and the handling times fluctuate, also the load fluctuate, fluctuates. Yes. Now, if you would schedule exactly twelve agents, then everything above this graph, well, has to wait. Yes, and actually waiting times will get very long. So the question is, how much more people should I staff to, to have a reasonable service level? And that is exactly what the Erlang formula does. And we call that safety staffing, a bit like inventory theory, huh? the stock in the shop uh, has, there's usually more stock than you expect that you need. We call that uh, safety stock. And here we call this uh, safety staffing. Yeah, so how much safety staffing do you need uh, to indeed mitigate the impact of the fluctuations? That is what uh, the Erlang formulas uh, do. Yes. And one thing, of course, and we'll get back to that, which you should realize is safety staffing is not the same as shrinkage. So the safety staff, these additional people, they should sit there and wait for calls to arrive. So they are idle. Yeah? So in this case, if you would schedule, let's say, 16 agents, then on average, 12 agents are busy. And these, this safety staff is now and then idle, and then everybody's busy, and then more than four are idle. But on average, there are four people idle. Yeah? So that is the idea of safety stuff. And shrinkage is, of course, um, an agent not being available for taking calls at all because he or she is in a training or is perhaps ill or uh, having a break, these type of things. Yeah? So that is an important uh, difference. Um, what I'm going to do 
um, is I'm going to uh, use our own um, add-in to show you how this works and how you can do that. So I'll start with Erlang C and then all the items I mentioned in the contents, I will one by one, I will show you these, uh, these calculations. What I'll do, I'll, I'll use our own uh, add-in, uh, Excel add-in, and there are some functions that do the trick. Uh, it's this, this, I will use it, uh, but if you want to know more about our add-in, then you should look at the manual and try it out. So I'm not going into all details, but one important thing, which is different from some other um, uh, add-ins for Erlang, is that it requires all the parameters to be in the same unit, in the same time unit. So um, what I'll do is I will translate everything to minutes. And as you'll see, actually that avoids some errors. As some of these add-ins, you have to enter the number of calls, uh, the, the forecast per quarter, but if you then work for a half hour, or if you want to do capacity planning, then that might go wrong. So. Uh, I think this is a good choice, but it, it is good for you to know. Okay, uh, let's go here. So this is uh, uh, Excel, but uh, in the cloud. So I, I hope it continues uh, working um, uh, as it should. Um, and I logged into our um, uh, add-in. So uh, I hope, uh, and that's of course the risk of online demo but I hope everything works as uh, planned. So let's fill this in. So I have here a forecast in a certain uh, quarter in a call center, 100 calls. I have an average handling time in seconds of 350. So what is my workload in minutes of work during this quarter? Well, that is 100 times with 350. And then of course, 350 is in seconds. So that is 583 minutes of work. As, as you saw previously, I had 60 calls in a quarter and I that was four per minute. So now I'm interested in what is my, how many agents do I need uh, at the same time sitting there doing this quarter to handle these um, these calls, yes? Now, this is the work, what you see, this 583 is the work that you get over a 15 minute uh, period. Yeah? So if I divide this by 15, then I get the amount of work, the amount of minutes of work that enters in every, in a minute. Yes, so this 83.8, yes, or dot nine, that is the amount of uh, minutes of work that enters every minute. So I need, if, um, uh, so if I would have sufficient agents, then this would be exactly the average number of agents that would be busy. Yeah, so that is this workload uh, had this 12 we saw in the previous graph. So now the question is, and I'm first going to try some number out here. Now the question is, how many agents would you schedule? Yeah, so perhaps somebody can put a suggestion in the uh, chat. How many agents would you schedule in this particular situation? And there, are, of course, there are no stupid things just double double the number okay 60. so double would be uh six uh, 76 uh, 60 uh hey, it's a bit less why not the nice thing about excel i can change these numbers so why not take 76 yeah so now i can compute the service level yes and i'm going to put Given the uncertainty, at least more than 40, like 50. Yeah, so 48, I see a, 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 a quite a number of good guesses. Yes, so everybody says more than 38, that's good. And then the level that determines my, my surface level. Now there's something else that when I compute the surface level, 
there's of course hey, it's often 80 20 yeah so um as often we want for example that 80 percent of our customers wait less than 20 seconds the 20 the the, the 20 of the 80 20 is here yes so now let's co compute the service level okay and remember everything has to be put in minutes so i'm going to my Erlang calculator um i want and then i have to look well, Erlang C is, is the same as Erlang X. So actually it's Erlang X, uh, where is it? SLA, so that computes the surface level. Um, if you look at the manual, then you can see um, what are the numbers to enter. But uh, ha, uh, I can tell you to avoid losing uh, more time looking at that. You have to start with the forecast again per minute yeah, so i divide by 15 then the average handling time per minute so i have to divide by 60. then the number of agents which is here and then the acceptable waiting time which is here but again in minutes so i have to divide the 20 by 60. So now it says so a service level of one, what does that mean? Well, it actually means a service level of 100%. So that is really high. And of course, I can ask myself, what is my occupancy? Yes, now I have an offered load of 38 and 76 agents. So that is this number divided by that number. And it was, well, I doubled it, but without the 0.8. So that is close to 50%. So let's turn this into a percentage as well. So as you can see, 76, well, you're at the safe side, but, but a lot. So let's decrease it. So I saw something, somebody say 50, I think. So that is still a 97% service level. Perhaps I should go to 45. Then I'm, I'm getting closer. Yes, so I hope to everybody now you see, and of course you can vary this number, this number of agents even further. So I hope you have an impression of how this works. And of course you can enter here in this, any number you like and, and experiment with that and get a feeling how much, what your service level is and also what your occupancy is. Um, let me do something else. Let's turn this around. You can also say, okay, I want an 80% service level. How many agents do I need? Yeah, so you can also uh, program something that tells you the number of agents. So that is again an Erlang X. Um, and then it says agents on the basis of the service level. This is the function. So Erlang X, agents SLA tells you how many agents that do I need given my service level uh agreements so then you start with the surface level then the forecast yes then the uh average handling time and finally you need the acceptable waiting time and that's this one and then it says well uh, 45 agents gave a service level of 82%. And so you expect a little less than 45, and that is exactly what it tells. What is interesting here is that you get, um, well, a little bit higher occupancy, but what is, I think, more interesting, I always like one or more digits behind the comma, even if it's a percentage. But what is interesting here is that it's a broken number. And now you might say, hey, I cannot. Uh, I, I, I cannot cut my agents in two, so this is ridiculous. But often we continue calculating that with that. For example, we add shrinkage. And therefore, it is good not always to round or to round once in the end. And if you have many small queues and you do Erlang multiple times and you do rounding and rounding up, and usually you do the rounding up, and then you add a lot of agents and you get a higher service level than, than required, yes? And every time you add one agent, and if you have many teams for which you do the Erlang calculation, eh, 
altogether, it is uh, it can add up to quite something. Okay, so that is the very basic calculations of the uh, of the Erlang C, and I hope you're all still uh, still with me. Now, an important property of the Erlang C that I want to uh, to tell you, and because um, Erlang C shows you shows economies of scale. Yeah? So if you have one team and another team, and uh, you join them together, then together they need less safety staffing than uh, than apart. Yeah, and. Um, you can also say the higher the workload, relatively speaking, the higher the, the safety staffing. Yes. For example, suppose that you are working for a call center and your, your call center traffic is being handled by several uh, business process outsourcers, several external parties. Then you can, of course, split, let's say, 50-50 and then they both operate like independent call centers and both have to apply Erlang or you put everybody on the same virtual platform and then it's like one big call center and then you apply Erlang to everybody meaning that you need less safety staffing because it's it's a bigger scale and you do not do the Erlang at the uh, separate entities yes so that is one thing and something else that is good to realize is that there are decreasing returns yes when you go from let's say a forecast of 100 to 200 eh, there's a big improvement in the decrease of the safety solving percentage but then when you go from 200 to 300 the this advantage is smaller yes the same holds eh, also um this er, these economies of scale are also one of the main reasons why we do multi-skilled and eh, why we have multi-skilled agents yes then you, eh, if people are multi-skilled you can also do the safety staffing for the whole pool instead of for the separate skills yes but it also means that a little bit of multi-skilled people does most of the trick and eh? so do not think right now everybody should be multi-skilled. No, it's is percentage-wise. Okay, um, I'll show you uh, how this works. Um, and um, yes, okay. Um, so what I'll do is I have here two situations in the B and the C column, and they differ in the fact that one has twice as high volume than the first one. I'm going to do this still with the Erlang formulas and then the rest of the presentation I will uh, do with uh, the sheets that are already uh, filled in uh, for, for reasons of, of time. But I'm going to show you once more the, uh, the Erlang C here. So um, in RC, and I'll, I'll get to Erlang X in a second, but Erlang C, um, in our um, tooling, you, it is Erlang X, but with less parameters. So we do not have a, a separate function, but that would amount to the same. So what is it again? We should start with the service level. Um, then we do the forecast. And that was again per quarter. So I divide by uh, 15. Then I do the average handling time divided by 60. And finally, the acceptable waiting time also in minutes, so also divided by 60 and then let's see so that is what we saw before this 44 agents then we saw this occupancy um, that was of course this uh, offered load divided by the agents now what is the safety staffing in absolute sense well that's simply the difference between these two yeah so the 44 minus the 38 that is the average number of idle agents yeah and if I divide this by um, my offered load, then I know what I need with the percentage that I need on top of that. Yeah, so here I have 14.8%, 14.9% overstaff. Now let's do the same thing for 200. And what do we see? 
we see that we go from safety staffing from 15% to around 10%. Yeah, so doubling the volume decreases my safety staffing by 5%. So that, that, these are the economies of scale. And let's now make it a bit bigger. What you see is that it goes from 15 to 10, and from 10 to seven and a half, and from seven and a half to six. So what you clearly see here, it is decreasing, but it is not decreasing linearly, it is decreasing less and less. So that is what I mean, decreasing returns. So the safety staffing gets smaller uh, as your call center grows in absolute terms it gets bigger but in relative terms the percentage of safety staffing gets lower but this percentage decreases yes and um well um and this is already also related to what i just said do not make everybody multi-skilled there's a lot to say about multi-skilled call centers there is of course different tooling Remember the Erlang formulas are only there for single skilled call centers. So where people are really multi-skilled or basically all uh, fully multi-skilled and uh, the, the situation in the middle, um, actually the Erlang formulas are not made for that. Uh, for simulations are then usually the, the way to go, um, are very accurate, but more time consuming as its advantages and disadvantages. But remember, the Erlang formulas are there for a single skilled operation or where people are almost all fully, um, fully multi-skilled. Okay, let's move on. Um, so these were economies of scale, important properties. Um, one thing, Martin raised the hand. So um, Eva, when you refer to multi-skilling, do you say something? Perhaps you can put it in the in the chat. Yeah. Okay, I'll wait for you to put something in the chat. In the meantime, I'll um, I'll wait for the uh, I'll tell you about the uh, the Erlang X. So the Erlang models, that is a mathematical, what we call a mathematical model. It's, it's a simplification. Um, ah, when you refer, let me answer the question. When you refer to multi skill, is phone and mail and chat or also phone? No, so mail and chat are really different, um, are different channels. So mail should be, uh, dealt with in a different way and, and chat definitely and if i'm not mistaken we have a webinar so if you want to look at that uh, we have a, a, a chat calculator and we also have a webinar on that because chat because of the concurrency of chat it is really different when it comes to mail if you would fill out and mail usually has a requirement of let's say uh, instead of 20 seconds, you have to answer your mail in four hours or 24 hours. If you would fill that in, in the Erlang formula, and uh, if, you, if I would fill it in, in the sheet here, in, if I would say here, instead of 20 seconds, I would put here 20 hours, so a very huge number, then you will see that the occupancy gets very close to 100%. Yeah, that is because this acceptable waiting time for mail is very long. And it actually also means, so what you are doing is you're basically scheduling your workload for mail. The thing about mail, the great th but does it mean that you, that you should treat mail as inbound, but just without safety stuff? And I think the answer is no, but be well, because inbound, you need to answer in 20 seconds. So you need to answer it in the interval it and en it enters yeah if a mail if a phone call arrives between uh, five past eleven then you have to pick it up well before that quarter is over and probably you fully handled it the email that enters at 11 you can also do it at one o'clock so scheduling email is more in which interval do i schedule it so it gives you some flexibility so it's more making the schedule for the agent when is the best time to do email during the day while for the inbound you really have to follow the the arrival pattern yeah so that makes 
both chat scheduling um, and because of the concurrency and email because you can shift it during the day, the day really differently. Yes, and that is so email is not so much an Erlang problem, it's more a scheduling, uh, scheduling problem. Yeah, so I hope that that answers your, uh, your question. Um, yeah, so have a look at it and you can always contact us if you want to have, uh, have more information. Um, so Erlang C is a mathematical model and any mathematical model is a simplification of reality. There is certain behavior of agents that perhaps when it's busy, they start to work harder or agent fatigue, these type of things are not in it. Yes, and any approximation has therefore a certain error. Now, today I don't have the time to go into all the errors that are part of the Erlang C, but there is one which I would like to mention, and these are abandonments. Yes, and abandonments is really an important feature that is lacking in the uh, in the Erlang X or in the Erlang C, and that is the reason why uh, have we built the Erlang X, and it it all also include some other features like redials and, and the number of finite number of lines. I won't go into these details. I just want to show you, and I'm going to show you what I already filled in in the sake of time because I don't want to um, take hours of your time. Let's try to keep it um, uh, uh, certainly within this hour. Um, but what you see here are the uh, same numbers, Erlang C, what you've seen before, Erlang C does not predict abandonments. So therefore I put here zero, Erlang C predicts zero abandonments. Yes. Now we go to Erlang X, this column here. Now I need a prediction of the patience of the customers. So somebody who's calling is willing to wait, uh, even uh, this person is probably not aware of that, but at some point in time, while waiting in the queue, a customer gets annoyed and uh, abandons. Yes, of course, when he or she gets um, what would be used to staffing drivers for home delivery. We will we'll get back to that. I uh, um, because home delivery is uh, uh, we record, and then if you. Uh, um, Um, we'll get back to that. Um, uh, because it depends a bit what, what you what you are referring to. If you're really referring to the geographical issues or um, our call center for home delivery, so we would uh, um, uh, perhaps uh, uh, we should, uh, we could be in contact on that about that later on. So the patience is the time that somebody is willing to wait. Also here you see fluctuations. Some um, some customers, they have short patience, others have longer. Here we assume on average five minutes. Now, if you do the early X calculation, what you see here, you get less agents. You schedule less agents. And, and in fact, early C is known to do overstaffing. Yeah? So here you schedule more than two agents less. And why is that? Yeah. Well, if people abandon, then the people uh, behind that customer and they get served earlier. So actually abandonments are bad for your service level because of the abandonments, but actually that is fully compensated by the fact that it keeps the queue short and they help all the customers behind them getting being served earlier. Yes. So um, that is what you see and that's why Erlang X is more realistic and gives you in general a lower number. Um, so, uh, of course, there are abandonments, and here you see the Erlang X also gives you an estimation of these abandonments. Yes, so um, this is one of the reasons why we think that Erlang X is, is really better than, than Erlang C. Of course, when Erlang himself invented the Erlang C formula, that was for a old fashioned switchboards and that was not really adapted to um, and to the current call center where people do abandon. And so it's really designed for a different reason. That's why Erling didn't do that. Um, and later on, uh, earlier in the previous century, certain scientists looked at that and we at CCMOD extended that uh, with a number of features and called it uh, Erling. The next more advanced subject 
is uh, rounding. Um, uh, so Erling X is a more uh, uh, advanced subject. Rounding is the same. So as I already said, rounding uh, is often done automatically and often twice, because as you'll see, hey, you, and as you probably know, next to safety staffing, hey, then you add the shrinkage. And then what people often do is round twice. And certain tooling does that even automatically. Yeah? But rounding is not always needed because uh, indeed, uh, and be to avoid that you round twice, but also, um, well, one reason is in capacity planning, but another reason might be that if you have cost, if you have agents with different hand average handling time, then one reason to deal with that in the Erlang formula is that you count them not as full agents, eh, but that faster agents count for more than one and slower agents count for less than one. I want to just show you the, the rounding um, um, and um, as you can see here, now, um, so here you see the number of agents that we calculated, and here I did a roundup. Yes. Now here, incidentally, it is uh, forty-one dot. Uh, uh, it is a, a number which is very close to forty-two. If I would take an arbitrary different number, if I would take ninety here. Then you see a big difference. Yes. Then you see, hey, it's now it's just over 38. You don't know that it's actually very close to 38. And then if you do the rounding, you get to 39. And suppose that you add a shrinkage of, well, perhaps uh, it depends on, on on what you're doing. But oops, um, yeah, that is something weird. Uh, oh. Uh, you can, of course, fill in any, any percentage that you like. Um, uh, oops, I should have done the the rounding here as well. Well, then you get to uh, to 49, of course. Yeah, so here you get one and a half agent more simply because of the uh, yeah, of, of of the rounding. Yes, and of course you might round want to round here at the end, but uh, so that's here at least a, a difference of one agent. And if you have ten groups like that, uh, that starts uh, starts counting. So rounding, you should be uh, be careful with that. Now let's move on to uh, scheduling. When you are doing scheduling. And um, let's first start here. And then I think when you're doing scheduling over a whole day, you usually have an intraday pattern. And as you can see here, the sum, it's very small here, but perhaps you can see it, the sum is one. So this tells you how this volume is split over the day. Yeah, so your forecast in an interval is like this. Yeah. So this is then a forecast per quarter. And then you can do exactly the same calculations as before. This is uh, probably well-known terminology. From this, you can calculate your workload. Then you can add your safety staffing on top of it. Then you get what we call net workforce. And then you can add the shrinkage. And I call it in shrinkage here because it's uh, we're at the scheduling step. But um, and you can, uh, and, and perhaps a bit of out shrinkage, but uh, uh, lower than when you do capacity scheduling. So then you get to your gross workforce. So I already filled it did in, and then you get uh, you get this. Um, let me show you. So this is a call center open from eight to well the last half hour interval. Uh, to, to make it fit on the on the screen, I made it turned it in. I looked at half into half hour intervals, twelve hours, and you do the the staffing. And perhaps you want to round it this up and make a schedule uh, out of that, or have that as input as your of your uh, uh, of your scheduling engine, your software tool. 
that you're scheduling software, or if you want to do it yourself, and we see small call centers do that, and perhaps you use the, the solver in, uh, in Excel to, to make your own schedule. Yeah, so that is how we do the, the, the scheduling. Now let's talk about capacity planning. Now the Erlang formula needs to be, and the idea behind the Erlang formula is that you fill in the numbers of the quarters it applies to. And of course, as we saw, if you have a low load, then the number of agents that you have is relatively low. And if you have a high load, then the number of agents required is higher. So I sometimes get the answer, hey, can I apply Erlang to the whole day at one? Can I fill in the day volume in the Erlang formula? And the answer is, no, that's not how the Erlang formula is, is designed. Yes? That is annoying. That is OK for scheduling, because then you need to know the number of, uh, of agents per interval. But it's definitely not annoying for capacity planning, because there you have a daily or perhaps a weekly volumes, or sometimes even monthly for, volumes. Eh? I, I would not use months because of eh, the, the broken number of weeks that, that are usually in months. So I would really uh, have work at a, at a weekly level. Um, and perhaps at a daily level. Um, but you don't have these profiles and you don't want, if you want to uh, do capacity planning for a longer period, have to go through the interval level completely. And actually something that, that I, I, I re well, that I learned not so long ago, and it was actually one of our uh, consultants at CCMAT who showed me this, Ronald Bars. And actually, although the Erlang is not made to look uh, made for uh, looking at, let's say, the average interval, there is a way, uh, indeed, by looking at this average interval to uh, to do the uh, to do the daily uh, uh, to do a day at once. And I want to go and look at that. And perhaps I'll take uh, a couple of minutes uh, to do this. So uh, let's uh, do what, uh, hey, let's work this out. So, um, well, just for uh, comparison, um, uh, so this is the forecast. Um, Let's go to the uh, to the minute level. Well, I I'm doing something. Oh, I'm forgetting some dollars. Sorry, one dollar here. Uh, oh, and I'm dividing by yes. That is, uh, I'm switching from 30 to uh, from a 50 minute interval to 30 minute interval. So that was an, an, uh, another mistake. Um, so here, this is the workload per half, uh, per minute per, from, for each half hour period. So what is my net workforce? Well, that is again this curling X here and Erlang agent SLA. And so again, what do we need? Well, I need here service level. Then I need a forecast divided by 30. Then I need average handling time. Uh, yes, average handling time divided by 60. And then I need acceptable waiting time, this one here. Also divided by 60. And that should give a number, yeah, a little bit higher than 65. That is very good. Okay. Now I should add my shrinkage. So I take this one and I divide by one minus the shrinkage at this. So 
I guess most of you are familiar with this. If you want to add shrinkage, you have to divide by one minus the shrinkage, yes, and not add forty percent to your network first. Yeah, and that is um, well, um, something uh, important to know. Now, what is the total number of agent hours that I schedule? Well, this is the number of half hours that I schedule. So if I multiply by two, then uh, then I get the number of of uh, uh, agent hours. Um, and now I should divide by two, of course. Yes. Yeah, so this is the total number of agent hours. This is the number. This sum is the number of half hours that I schedule, and this is the number of hours. Now let's look at the average forecast. So I can take the average over the day. And let's do what I did here um, for the average. So the average half hour uh, requires 147 agents. Now, how many half uh, hours are there? These are 12 hours. So if I take this number, and then I hope it, uh, I haven't made any mistakes. Uh, and I did. Ah, I have 12 hours. And, and so this is the number of agents that I need at any point in time. And I have 12 hours, so I get, uh, uh, I have to multiply by 12 by the, to get the number of total agent hours. And what you see, and, and to be honest, when I first saw this, I was really, uh, how do you say that, my, I was really baffled. Uh, as you can see here, these two numbers are extremely close. Yes? And, uh, and so working with the average forecast, uh, uh really works as good as uh as working and of course if you have bigger differences in volume if you have perhaps during the night the volume is very low and uh and big during the day the differences can be a bit uh bigger but this is really tells you that you can work with the average it and and this work actually also for erling c Yes, this property is the same for Erling X and Erling C. Yeah, we could easily, and we can even check that uh, very easily. Uh, I, I think I did. I didn't. Did I enter? No, I entered here Erling C, didn't I? Um, yeah, I didn't enter patients here. So I, I actually used Erling C here. Yeah, for Erling X, it's the same. It's, it's both the same. I didn't enter uh, uh, here as a patient, but I forgot to enter it in the formula. And we can add the patients. Um, and actually, when I add the patients, I could, well, then I have to do it in all the formulas. Yeah, but it's one minute work. Yes, and you will see exactly the same thing. Um, however, you should do it in the right way. And as I do it, edit, but I, I hope it's, it looks like pretty obvious and uh, that I'm convinced you. But one of the questions, and that was also uh, one important motivation to give this this uh, this webinar, is somebody said, "Well, can I not just enter the the sum of the volumes? Is that not another solution?" Yes. So, uh, and the sum of the volume is of course ten thousand. Yes. And um, and then he said, "Okay, why not apply the Erlang to this?" uh had to, to this sum yes and now um hey, you have to this is not the um of course now you have all the volume uh in uh in in half an hour so you have to um what uh so it's like all the volume all the ten thousand calls are entering in half an hour so these are the number of half hours. So you have to, uh, let's see, well, perhaps, and you just have to go here, that's easier. So the, 
uh, the oh it's, it's of course the i forgot to yeah i still have to add the shrinkage so that is here and now eh, because these are half hours in terms of uh if i want to translate this to half hours to hours then i have again to divide by two yes and what you see is now you get something that is really considerably lower yeah i see some people are leaving yeah, if you have to leave i'm, I'm sorry it take perhaps a, a bit longer than you expected but uh, uh thanks for attending um so as you can see this number here is really lower than uh than this number. Yeah, so taking a sum of the forecast, it's like all the calls are arriving in one interval. That is not a good approach. But the point I want to make is that if you take the average, that really works. Yes, and that is how you uh, uh, how you can avoid having uh, all these lengthy calculations in your uh, capacity plan. Okay, of course, if you make a capacity plan, that is usually a, a, a sheet way more complicated than what, what I'm showing. I'm, of course, only showing you the Erlang part of it. Um, um, yeah, but your uh, calculations, yeah, they would end up doing something like this. Uh, we can, you can also use it on the weekly level volumes, absolutely. Yes, be careful with openings times, eh? with, with holidays when your call center is perhaps closed. But that act, actually, that's exactly what I want to show you here. Um, so what you have here, I just took four weeks as an example. Of course, if you have a capacity planning sheet, that's way more complicated, lots of other things in it, and just concentrating on the Erlang part of it. But suppose you have a call center that is open, uh, well, seven days, 12 hours, just to choose some number, you have 80, 20 service level. Uh, one full time, uh, probably you have a mix of agents with different uh, uh, working hours. Um, here, I assume we're just uh, having a full time equivalence of 40 hours um, and a patient of five minutes. Uh, I can't remember, did I do the, uh, 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 the uh, here? Yeah, here I, I took the patients in it. So same calculation now with Erlang X. So different volumes, different average handling time, perhaps in week three, a new team entered that just finished their training and they have longer handling times. Perhaps, I don't know, in week two, there's a, a flu a pandemic uh, going on. So different shrinkage and um, well, set the same calculations. Uh, so here the translation to net workloads the uh, these numbers are per interval way lower so uh 15 16 agents that you need um uh then um well you can add the shrinkage and um uh, this is by the way this is the staffing level this is the staffing multiplied by the number of hours and, and minutes so this is the amount of minutes of work Yes, you add the shrinkage and then you divide by 40 and then you round uh, by 40 hours and then you get uh, the number of FTE that you need. Yeah, and that would be then the, uh, uh, the, the input of perhaps thinking, okay, how many people do I have to hire, etc. Uh, part of the other parts of your uh, sheet. <clears throat> Um, is there a function which provides simulated occupancy against Erlang occupancy? We don't have an, uh, a simple, uh, it's not part of the add-in that I'm showing it here, but we, um, uh, on our website, there is, is, is some tooling and, and we definitely have that tooling. Yes, and um, simulation is also something um, uh, we do, uh, uh, we uh, we use often in our other types of tooling. Somebody shows you the average. Um, you want to see, uh, I guess. Um, so this formula here. Yeah, I can't show you all the formulas. This here is the average, and then you continue calculating with it. Yeah. So you take the average, and this is actually the average uh, forecast per minute, and you use that that as a starting point of your uh, calculations. 
Yes, we will send you the, the presentation and also the uh, Excel sheet afterwards. Um, okay. So uh, as a conclusion, take the average, uh, uh, the forecast for the average minute and uh, constant start and, and, and assume a constant staffing level over the day. And from there you can uh, get something that also works for, uh, uh, that is also works for any arrival pattern. Okay, this was the, the content of, um, <coughs> of my webinar, of our webinar. If you want, I touched on a lot of things and of course I had to um, go in one direction, otherwise I would be talking uh, um, uh, many hours. Um, um, I could go in different direction. Of course, we have different webinars that, um, uh, that go into more different subjects. Might be good also to know that we do have uh, uh, online trainings. We do also face-to-face -face trainings, but um, if you're interested in knowing more about Erlang, how calls arrive, how to do scheduling, Erlang X, everything, um, uh, please have a look at this uh, site. Um, the uh, add-in I mentioned, of course, you can use it yourself. It's, it's in the Office 65 store and it is uh, at, a, um, uh, at, a, at a low subscription rate and there's a manual and everything that, that, uh, that can help you uh, with that. We do have uh, really standalone forecasting and scheduling products. That was not the focus of today, but if you're interested in, in that, please go to our, uh, go to our website. Okay, that's it uh, for today. Um, um, uh, if you have any remaining, so thanks a lot for your attention. It is uh, almost five o'clock, so I understand it, at least here in, uh, in Western Europe. If you uh, need to leave, then I fully understand that, of course. But if you have any remaining questions, please put them in the, uh, uh, in the chat or speak up aloud. Um, there was one remaining question by somebody who said, we, what would be used as staffing drivers for home delivery? Home delivery, uh, rounding at the right place is important, just to know that. There's something I want to mention, uh, home delivery, if you're talking about, then you also have travel time and, and how to schedule that. That is, uh, and, uh, that, that has to be taken into account, but you could, uh, use the Erlang formula also for, uh, and then as the service time, uh, think about, yeah, use the average driving time. Uh, that that, that could, be, uh, could be a solution. Yes. Of course, there you don't have abandonments, uh, I, I, I guess, but um, yeah, in that way you could calculate the required number of drivers um, for, for home delivery. So indeed, Erlang, Erlang formulas can be used also for, for other applications. And I hope that is what you're uh, referring to. Okay, good. Thanks all very much for, for your attention. And have a great, uh, it's, it's, the weekend starts right now, certainly here in, uh, in Western Europe. So all have a great weekend. Thanks for your attention.